Hey everyone, good morning. Sager, what are we up to today? Happy Tuesday, everybody. We've got Mike Lillis from the Hill to tell us about Elizabeth Warren. She's raising some eyebrows with some interesting congressional endorsements. Former U.S. mission uh, in Afghanistan to talk about that potential peace deal, which is now dead, according to President Trump. And then Gilad Edelman to talk about an interesting piece about the changing attitudes on technology from the right and the left and whether that sector has the government coming after them. All that coming up today on Rising. Hello, everybody. Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, folks, it's just about time for another Democratic debate, and you know what that means. Time to roll out more industry-approved Medicare for All smears. Take it away, former Chicago mayor and current Wall Street investment banker Rahm Emanuel. We've taken a position so far, and the candidates have, through the process, a few have not, about on basically Medicare for All, which is we're going to eliminate 150 million people's health care, and we're going to provide health care for people that just come over the border. That is an untenable position for the general election. This statement is so wrong on so many levels. First of all, this is a classic example of the Clinton model of doing business. Rather than start from what is right and what is just, they start from, hmm, what do we think people want to hear? Now, this is all allegedly done in the service of winning, but the problem is, while we were so focused on doing all that winning at the expense of our principles, we actually ended up doing a whole lot of losing. Thousand state legislative seats, governor's mansions, the House, the Senate, and then, of course, the White House. And while pretty much all of rural America, the very place that democratic centrism was supposed to be most appealing, yay. Yes, health care is an election issue. It is also a moral imperative, especially in a wealthy nation. Second of all, is there some rule banning Medicare for all supporters from the Sunday shows? It is one of the most popular policy proposals going, with real support across party lines, but you wouldn't know it if you were just listening to Chris Christie, Rahm Emanuel, Rich Lowry, or any of the other center-right or neoliberal guests, protectors of the status quo that these shows just love to book. But most importantly, Let's actually get into the meat of Emanuel's tired talking point here. This line about Democrats taking away the health care of 150 million Americans and giving it to immigrants. Now, the thing about Medicare for all is that, well, it's for all. So it's kind of hard to get mad at those mean immigrants for getting all the health care when you are also getting that very same health care. But the other thing is, guaranteeing that everyone Amer in America has quality health care without being financially destroyed is not remotely equivalent to eliminating health care for 150 million people. It is utterly absurd to imagine that people are in love with their current health insurers and the current system is in any way defensible. For one example, let's take a look at a news item from just this week about our awesome health care system. Here's the Washington Post. Over six years, ending in June 2018, the University of Virginia Health System and its doctors sued former patients more than 36,000 times for over $106 million, seizing wages and bank accounts, putting liens on property and homes, and forcing families into bankruptcy, a Kaiser Health News analysis has found. 36,000 times. The Post goes on to report how UVA Health System routinely garnished the paychecks of low-wage Walmart workers, pushing many families into financial oblivion, literally destroying their lives, all because these individuals had the audacity to get sick. Just think about that. Your life destroyed, home foreclosed on, marriage ruined due to financial stress, all because you got sick. It is truly barbaric. By the way, UVA is nonprofit, meaning that our taxpayer dollars are going directly to subsidize this monstrous and cruel practice. So when you hear these lies about how we can't possibly change our health care system because it'd be electoral disaster, just please kindly remind people that we already have a moral and ethical disaster on our hands. Oh, and also, by the way, Medicare for All is supported by a clear majority of voters even when you explain that that means a diminished role of private insurance. So you can just stop with the scare tactics about how this is going to ensure Trump's reelection. Now, I know that we're supposed to believe that once loader, voters learn the truth about Medicare for all, they're suddenly, suddenly going to turn on it. But it's not like these scary industry talking points are any kind of a secret. Negative attacks on Medicare for All are constantly trotted down on the Sunday shows and cable news, fixated on at every debate. The president trashed m a in a big op-ed, and the industry is literally already running TV ads to try to stop Medicare for All's momentum. 
Americans have heard all about the horrors of not bankrupting Americans, not garnishing their wages, and not putting liens on their homes. Turns out that maintaining the status quo is far scarier than anything that Rahm Emanuel, Donald Trump, or the dumb debate moderators can conjure up.